So hi. So today I'm really excited for this spaces uh, to talk with Coin Queens, uh, aka Heather, <laughs> which I met uh, in NFT NYC, and I think I fell in love with you basically and everything that you're doing, producing such amazing content, um, and onboarding so many amazing women to Web3. So thank you for that. And hi, Heather. So excited to have you here. Hello. Thank you. That is so nice. I mean, I feel likewise. I remember when um, you were minting and I was just starting like getting into NFTs and I would listen to you on spaces or be in the discord. And I feel the same way. I was like, you were so authentic, so real and clearly so talented and so passionate about you know, coming into the Web3 space with your art, I was like, oh, I bet on this girl all day long. I minted, I actually minted one. And then like in five minutes, I'm like, I'm going to mint my max five. So I went ahead and minted the other four. (laughs) Oh my God, this is so cool to hear. And it's so exciting for me to hear that, you know, you know, you were listening to me on spaces as well. um, Because I feel that, you know, it's so exciting for me to like, hear that, you know, through like just being ourselves and being authentic and speaking here on spaces, like we have, you know, all these amazing women come on board and so excited to have you with us since Mint. I mean, isn't that amazing? Like, it's crazy. Like so much time passed and here we are like with the community, with everyone. So yes, I would love to hear about your journey to NFTs. What got you even interested? What you were looking for? So when you when you stumbled upon NFTs and really how how did you begin your way? I would love to hear about that journey. And also you have a project minting soon, right? Yeah. So it's going to be a little different. It's not going to be a typical mint. So I'll t- I'll start with how I ended up in NFTs. So several years ago, one of my good friends' husbands they moved into our neighborhood. And they were, you know, a couple of our age, kids our age. So we got to know them. And the first time I went to their house in their garage, um, there were all these like carts with fans and like computer servers on them. And I was like, what in the dear Lord is all of this? And uh, my friend Jenny was like, oh, my husband, he mines Bitcoin. And I was like, what? Like I had, I had never, ever even had a thought about Bitcoin or cryptocurrency or anything like that. And then um, fast forward to today and my husband, um, my friend's husband, Scott, and two other partners, we started a crypto fund because as we were having success in the crypto space, people were like, okay, hey, I want to invest in crypto. I want to do this and I want to do it a little different than just they wanted more exposure than just buying Bitcoin or Ethereum, you know, staking, getting into maybe some bigger blue chip NFTs, just being a little more creative, um, but also doing it in as conservative of a way that you can um, invest in a volatile, you know, asset like crypto. So we started a couple of years ago putting the fund together. We started as an LLC. Um, and it got off the ground about a year ago. And then now we have about 5 million assets under management and it's been a great success and it's been a fun way, but there was a lot of roadblocks initially for onboarding and it was typically the spouses. So I was fielding a lot of phone calls or, um, just running around like playing tennis or whatever girls being like, Hey, why does my husband want to move this big chunk of money out of our traditional investment account into crypto? What the heck is crypto? What is an NFT? And um, I'm like, it's a non-fungible token. Does that help you? No. Like, we, it's a more than a five-minute conversation. So I was like, I, it was not feasible for me to have all of these, you know, in-depth two-hour conversations with everyone about what Web3 and crypto was. So I said, I'm going to do a happy hour. I said, any lady that wants to come is welcome to come. And it took me, I really took my time developing like a really nice program for the happy hour. Like I made booklets. I was like a welcome to Web3 and I had everything from QR codes. So that if they wanted to participate, they could set up their mat, their MetaMask with me. If they wanted to just go on Coinbase and buy a nice little chunk of their own. You know, I was trying to like cover all the bases. And I expected maybe a handful of women to come because trying to get um, women to devote some time to tech and finance, you know, is, is I thought highly unlikely. 
And um, we ended up having 22 women come and it was a massive success. And the end result was them going, sure, my husband can go invest in the fund. That's great, whatever. But I want to play. The NFTs really, women just kind of relate to them. As you all know, everyone in this room does uh, enjoy them. And it just is like a fun way to invest. It's, you know, you get that visual. It's not just a number in a bank account. And it, it, you know, you can put some emotion and, or you can just do it for the art. There's so many different ways to do it. So that went so well. And then the women really, a lot of them wanted to keep learning more. So then I did one on NFT valuations and investing. And then um, it just kept growing from there. I have a group of women over the age of 65. They're about to fractionally buy a board ape next month. It's going to be the coolest thing ever um, because they're just like, hey, we want to play in this space. Why can't we? And it's just fun. You know, it's something to do. So that's how I got into NFTs. So about a year ago, I started pretend investing in nfts because i didn't trust myself to know enough about what i was doing and um and then once i took the leap there was no going back as you guys all know you're all here for the same reason so it's been really it's been really fun so that's how i got into it um and here i am now (laughs) wow that is definitely not the typical answer but this is more than amazing and i mean how cool is that that you have you know but you're teaching like 65 year old plus women um, buying a fractional, like having like buying an eight together, like fractional, you know, it has, this is like insane. It's incredible. Wow. Congratulations on that. And it just shows how women really want to learn when they're given a voice that approaches things. I would say approachable way, right? That's what I felt like an understandable way, a safe way, because I feel that for me, being in a room in a way, I don't want to sign, like, I feel like in my beginning of my journey, being in a room with, like, men, I was afraid to ask things in a way. Uh, I did ask the funny questions as well, but I feel like being the only woman in the room kind of felt a bit scary to ask things. But when I'm in a room with women, I always feel so comfortable um, and, and ease, like, of asking things. So I think... This is something that also definitely helps on that that path. Uh, and having you as their first step, I mean, they're so lucky. So, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I agree. I think I have, um, I yeah, I realized after having that very first one, I was, I didn't, I had no vision for being here, like at this moment, getting ready to start a Web3 business um, at all. But as I was, I it was so exciting and it was almost like a high at the end of that meeting, like having women open up their MetaMask and maybe they only put, you know, maybe they only put like a hundred bucks in it, but they're like, I wait, I'm going home and I'm telling my husband I'm a crypto investor. Now maybe they spent, you know, they bought a hundred bucks out of Bitcoin and a hundred dollars of Ethereum and they, but they were empowered and they thought it was cool. And maybe some people were just going to like DCA their way for 50 bucks a month just to have a little exposure to it. There were some women who were like, oh, I want to start buying. Um, You know, I'm ready to invest in all these NFTs and play the game. Um, Although I will say that's not the typical part. And that, so that's what sped me to where, kind of where I am now with Coin Queens um, is I feel like as I was spending over the past year time on Twitter spaces and getting, you know, just one-on-one meeting different people like you or other moderators, um, everyone's really smart and they are entrepreneurial and they're risk takers and they, everyone that's here has spent the time to invest in themselves to gain all this knowledge. And I'm, and I just see everybody reinvesting their money in other NFT projects and that's great, but I feel like everyone's kind of bouncing around with all of this great knowledge and everyone says, their biggest goal is to onboard more women and to empower women in web three and everyone's running into roadblocks doing that. And I'm like, Hey, I'm, I'm doing it successfully. Why can't I give women my product and platform that I'm using so they can go do it and I can help with web three adoption while also showing them how they can generate revenue by doing it. So I just, it's just, it was like a glaring like road sign, like, okay, there's a big pain point here of trying to reach out to in real life communities or create their own community of women, which every person that's on this call and every person that is a discord mod or a community manager, they have all the skills, whether they want to believe it or not, they have 
more than enough skills to lead a group of women into just setting up a wallet, maybe just investing a little bit of money and watching it grow or, you know, however it may go in this market um, or helping them buy NFTs that speak to them, whether it's one of one or every person is different, but every woman that is playing in this space right now is more than qualified. And I think they just need a little bit of business coaching and a little bit of like a, of a, an organized way to reach out to their community to successfully bring them into Web3. And that's what I want to try and do. And that's what I'm hoping to do. So when I have on August 2nd, I'm kind of throwing like a launch party to try to show everyone what a wine woman and wallet event looks like, um, how I have had success with them. And then I'm, I want to start small. So I mean, I mean, everyone does things different and I love how people are starting to innovate and I would like to bring on a small amount of women. I'm shooting for 50 women because I want to meaningfully be able to coach, help them succeed, whether that's me helping them host via Zoom, maybe it's in real life, but I want to be able to have like this really great proof of concept where this group of women go out, have success. And then from there as a team, as a core, there'll be benefits to being part of the core coin Queens team. And then we can decide how best to onboard the next, maybe hundred women there. And then from there, another hundred to be their own leaders in their community to kind of like do basically clone me and put you out all over um, in your community to help onboard women. So that's the goal. <laughs> I love that. And I think what's really beautiful about that is that the NFT industry today, even though we're like a small group, there's women from all over the world. So for me, I'm from Israel. So I would know how to, let's say, access this knowledge to women that speak Hebrew or Ada here that is the host um, that she knows um, Spanish. Uh, she's from Puerto Rico originally. So she can teach women from her community in Spanish and make it accessible in the Spanish language or other languages, you know, from French to whatever, um, uh, to Arabic, and then really make this go global that way. Because I think that really, like you said, the women today in the space, they're really entrepreneurial, they're taking risks. Uh, but they're also, um, they're, they're really investing so much time learning. So I think it's a really great way just to each for each one of us, us also to onboard women um, to our communities um, and, and make it expand in the best way possible. Because I think that also another great thing by doing that, we're making sure they're learning from the right people in this space because it's so easy to get into the space and learn from the wrong people. So I think this is just another great thing. And congratulations because you are so successful in just being able to bring that knowledge to so many women. Uh, and I would love also to hear some success stories or just stories of, of women investing. I mean, you did say about a group of women buying an ape together, uh, but I would love to hear some more stories if you have. And um, yeah, and I have plenty of questions. I, I'll save them for after instead of asking a million. <laughs> No. Okay. That's great. And I want to say also, this is not my real account. So I logged back in on this account, which is a separate account I have, um, because I got blocked um, from the other one when I joined the space. So I don't know if I if someone wants to like pin actually my real um, account, which is coinqueens.eth. I just is just my old school, old time Twitter. Um, but I logged in so I, in this one so I get in the space. Um, but I'll touch on the safety part too. Um, that, that, I think, is the biggest roadblock. So you have, like, some really great projects, like BFF, um, who did that big onboarding. I mean, if they won NFT NYC's award for best um, onboarding um, or most successful onboarding project. And I think that is one way that has proven to work. But what I have seen when I'm out in a community and when I, or if I'm in a group in front of a group of women, I think that it's a it's a it is a dangerous space right now. It is not user friendly. I mean, that's one of the biggest topics in my Welcome to Web3 presentation is it's not user friendly yet. It's not seamless. It's hard. It's clunky. But the reason we're doing it is because we all want a chance to invest when like Apple was $2, right? Like we all would have wanted to invest in Amazon when it was $3. So what we're doing now is trying to safely help our women get a chance to invest and in, in, in something like that and have one of those big opportunities. Maybe it's an NFT project or maybe it's just, you know, wisely investing in 
Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever you, you know, you have to do that as the community lead. Right. And so I think that the having a group of women being able to look you in the eye and be like, okay, if I put my debit card in this, you swear to God, you know, that, that nothing bad is going to happen and you, I can trust you. And, and that's important. And I think women need that more, um, that little sense of community, like, okay, we're doing this safely together. I think that's such a good point. And that's why I think this is a scalable way for me because it doesn't, every woman doesn't need to have a thousand people follow her. She, if you had 20 women in your group and maybe it's, women, you know, from your kid's school, or maybe it's from your job, or maybe it's from, you know, a Bible study, maybe it's from a, like a workout class you do. Um, I think women don't realize how, you know, much community they have and how influence, influential they probably are in their own community. And people do want to know this. And so doing it in a safe way is so important. So I love that you said that. Um, successes, I mean, just for me, I think success varies. Success could be as simple as one of my girlfriends who's got college age kids. One of her kids is actually a very famous um, singer. And she's like, I want to know about crypto and NFTs before they do. I want to teach them, you know, that I, their mom, they didn't have to teach me Facebook or Instagram. I'm going to show them. So for me, that's a success. Like it could be that simple of giving um, a woman the opportunity to feel smart and and confident in her skills and knowledge like I love that that is it's so it feels so good it could be like the board ape we're about to buy which is going to be so fun because they're they're also again so proud they have these women have kids that are almost my age and so for them to they're so excited to buy it and show their kids and be like look what we own that's a, a success to me because I feel confident in that um, NFT project that it's going to be here it's going to grow their ecosystem is I think going to be around for a long time so it feels like a safe investment for them um, and then. I mean, and then it it could be like, I have a friend who just sold a medical device company and she not enough to, not enough to, you know, walk away from work for forever, but she had a small medical device company sold that and is in kind of a transition period. She went to one of my wine, women and wallet events and then set up a lunch with me separately to get a little more deeper into like, talk to me about blockchain. Actually, how does it work? And and I always say, I'm not innovating with blockchain. My, I, my skill set is, is bringing things to a relatable way so people can understand and participate if they wish. And I want to get this like blockchain information, smart contracts out in front of women like her because she's sitting at that lunch going, oh my gosh, I had this brilliant idea how this technology could improve, you know, this you know, pain point in her industry. And she's walking the path now to build something around that. And I'm connecting her to devs or whatever. And I'm like, that's a success. Just getting this information in front of women leaders that can bring it to their industry so they can have success. That's, that feels so good. Like I love it. So yeah, those are success definitions of success for me. I love that. And I love that you said about bringing it to different industries, because I think that I was just actually listening to a TED talk yesterday that they said how they took a certain technology of, of software chips and then for delivering chips, uh, something very sensitive and took it into um, the biomedicine industry. And then it was so successful with the biomedicine that it's actually a really uh, good way these days, the best way, in fact, to deliver um, biological samples. So I think that just that, bringing blockchain into other technologies is amazing. And I love that you said also that, you know, just being ahead of the game like there's so many different success stories and measured in so many different ways uh and i think that it's so beautiful uh learning something you know teaching their kids like i think just gaining this knowledge and, and teaching it um this is what women do and, and for me i can share also from my personal experience I had a lot of women and i and i feel like it, it touches on the point exactly when you said that um, that this information is not user friendly and it's not accessible. And if you want to learn it today, you still really have to sit with someone and explain. Not because these concepts are so <laughs> complicated, just because it's really not 
easy to, I would say, it's just not user friendly, um, not really approachable, I would say. Um, and I think because because today when a friend comes and asks me, oh, so how do I buy my first NFT? And especially if she doesn't really speak English and she doesn't want to take an NFT course and she doesn't want to sit and watch like a million YouTube videos that didn't necessarily explain it properly. And she didn't really get exactly how to do it um, and just kind of want to hear from a safe resource how to do it in the right way um, and not just run around the Internet. I feel like the best answer that I always say is, oh, we need to sit and I need to show you and explain it to you, maybe over a Zoom or maybe in IRL, depends who, you know, the woman is. And then I always find it so hard, like you said, to to replicate yourself and <laughs> show a million people how to do it. So I think this is a really great solution uh, because it does take this, let's sit together and let's, um, you know, talk crypto, talk NFTs, talk investments or collecting or however you want to get in because there's so or what's a smart contract what's you know there's so many different things and i i really congratulate you also on on your new project because i think it's going to be absolutely amazing and change so many women's lives for the better so yeah just i wanted to say that and i think that um it's so true uh and i would love to ask you actually um what do you think are the best resources if if someone because actually one of the most popular questions I'm getting uh, from women is um, how how do I find the right communities because they hear me talking about all the women communities and they're like oh how how do I find the right communities to go to where do I start with them so I usually would send them you know to one of the Instagram pages of let's say BFF or hug or something like that or um one of the you know or you <laughs> for example on instagram uh but but for people that don't have you know these connections or i tell them to go on spaces on twitter so i would love to hear where you kind of get your information and send women as um reliable sources to hear kind of the about the right communities about the right projects and the right information um regarding crypto and nfts Okay, so I love this question because so one of my I think the biggest struggles that I see NFT projects now currently female that feed other female focused, they have so many wonderful um, educational resources like BFF does. I mean, Mavion Michelle Reeves is like the hustler of all hustlers, right? Trying to educate women, um, e even one on one when we were at NFT NYC, just literally one on one. And for me, I, that's one of the biggest was one of the biggest red red flags to me in NFTs was that's not a scalable approach, right? Like one on one onboarding of women. I mean, it's it's great. Great. Any woman that gets the information for me is a win. But when we're looking at like a scalable way to educate, I mean, I just don't, I don't think there is a great one on one resource because I think a lot of women, some women like, like me, I started, I started reading, like, I'm kind of a dork. So I'm like in white papers, like I'm pouring over like long, long, I like to read. I don't like pictures, I like words and I like to see it in my head, but not everyone's like that. Right. So it's like trying to tailor this education to specific women. So it's the whole idea of what I'm trying to do is because I, I always tell my husband, like, you know, the women, when I ta first start talking about crypto or blockchain, you know, they're like, oh, this is too big. This is too much. I can't even wrap my head around it. I, I don't want, I don't, I can't do it. And I'm like, well, do you go to Target and do you swipe your credit card? Can you tell me about the processes that happen when you swipe that credit card, how that money makes it from your bank, you know, from that card transaction to Target's bank? Do you, No, of course you don't, but you trust it, right? And so I think one of the biggest things that we're missing is we're going a little too deep. I went super deep. You clearly did. You created an NFT project. And I think that's great. And I think it is important that there are women leaders with a super strong understanding and knowledge of the the base the real you know nitty gritty of blockchain but for me i don't think that the typical woman who wants to invest or have an opportunity for some financial gain or revenue generation needs to 
understand it in the way that people sometimes are trying to deliver it. I think they need to hear it from a trusted source, someone that says, yes, this is cool. This is how you safely play in this space. Um, and so typically, I, I mean, I'm sending women like I have in my presentation, I have a whole thing on safety. And I usually just share that I just clip that one page out and shoot it on. Um, because if they're asking me, I feel like then they trust me. And it, it just no matter I think women are savvy and I love all the celebrity, you know, um, influenced content like that, you know, is trying to educate. But I think people are savvier and still a little gun shy to trust these people they don't know when it comes to their money. So, yeah. So that's like a long way of saying I don't have any I don't think there is a great resource for like a one size fits all. I really don't. And that's what basically I'm trying to create. I'm trying to make all these brilliant, badass women that are in Web3 that have all this knowledge to be that trusted advisor for the people in their community, in their schools, in their workplace, at their physician's office. Like they, they, they have it and they can share it in a meaningful, meaningful way. So people can participate in a way that they want. And I don't think most people are going to participate in the way that we do here. And I think that's okay. Like we're not going to crypto Twitter. These streets are, are tough. And I think there's a place for all of us here. And I think as it grows, I think this stuff shouldn't be seen. This should all be in the background. This should be us working hard, researching, you know, making recommendations. We will eventually, I think in my head, be the Web3 advisors where people look to say, what's your new, like I send out a quarterly newsletter to my group of women that I brought onto Web3. And, you know, they use that to dictate where they, you know, where they want to invest, if they do, if they don't, what, you know, what their plan is. So yeah, that, that's, that's my best answer for that. That's amazing. Um, and, and so much, I think, insightful information about, you know, this space is big, there's space for everyone for all the different things. This is only one part of it. And, you know, and just to learn to invest, you don't need to know, you know, how the money gets from, you know, target from the credit card to target, right? Um, so I love that. And I think I, I was wondering, um, what would you what advice would you give to a woman that you know, was saying, okay, I, I have a wallet. Um, I, I know how to buy stuff on OpenSea, but how do I find the right, um, the right NFT projects? Like if she's interested, you know, in quality woman led projects or, you know, things like more, more in that realm, uh, where to start, where to go to, um, because not everyone know, um, no, sorry, how to, to find these these projects, not everyone on Twitter or on different places. So where would you send her to, I guess, your newsletter or, or other resources? Yeah, I would, well, I would have to start with like what her goal is. If her goal, like every woman's goal is different. Some literally just want a cute PFP that they can put on their social media. So, you know, define what's cute for them, show them some options and then send them on their way. I would say for the most part, the women that I have gotten to know over the past year don't really want to regularly participate in a lot of these spaces. A lot of them are looking for an opportunity, something they connect with um, and and that they can have fun with, but also feel like has, um, you know, like a, a future that is going to grow. Their investment will grow. I, I look at most women who are, are participating in all of these projects as like teeny little mini angel investors. Like every little... NFT that you hold is like your little proof of a tiny little angel investment you've made in that founder. And so I would, I would just be like, what's your goal? Is it just a great looking PFP? That's probably going to accumulate, um, you know, great, go higher in, uh, value over through the years, you know, I, then you would maybe send them to certain ones if they're just looking for art and they want a new way to collect art and participate in digital ownership of art, then like I would send them to your account. Or I think you really have to figure out what their goal is. Um, if it's because they want to, you know, go deep and understand blockchain and Web3, then I would probably do like, you know, Curious Addies or all, you know, Zeneca, all these, you would just have to use you know, whatever their goal is to try and pick what the best projects are. And I think trying to help women not get overwhelmed, like a lot of us 
probably have where you're in 20, 30 different discords in all of those projects over your head. You're not meaningfully participating in any of them. You're just kind of like, where can I get my, make sure I get into the next giveaway or don't miss any, you know, potential free airdrop or whatever. So yeah, I would think it depends on each woman's goal. And then I would try and give no more than three of what my opinion is or the best um, accounts that would meet whatever their goal is. I love that. And I feel that you explained it in such a way that I've never heard before that is very similar to actually different types of investing, like real estate, for example. Like if someone says, I want to buy, um, you know, a house or a piece of land. So they, you ask them, what what is your um, purpose for getting it? Do you want like a vacation home or do you want to rent it long term or do you want to rent it short term or maybe you just want to live there? Um, so like I feel like it really resonates with the different types or even like investing in stocks. Like are you investing in a company because you believe in the mission or because you want to have it as a long-term investment or you want to have it as a flip? So, yeah. So I really think that this is a super cool analogy um, just to the world that we can understand in a way. Um, so, so that's really, really cool. And, um, yeah, and I would love to just, you know, I think it's just so amazing, like what you're doing in this space. Uh, I think we have like 10 more minutes before I'm going to bring some, you know, maybe people up to the stage to ask some questions. I can imagine they might have some questions. Um, and I see that most of the people here kind of, I'm assuming if you have a PFP, you already maybe know a bit about NFTs and did invest. Um, so maybe uh, I would love to just hear about some, you know, experiences that you had since going into NFTs. Oh, I see that Edda has her hand up. Uh, so maybe she wants to ask a question soon. So or you want to talk, Edda, feel free. Yeah, Edda, I want to ask you, in your experience already, you know, doing this with a group of females and, and other investors, why do you think if one, one like their, their feedback right after their first session and why do you think like an estimate of the percentage of women that you really think that like kept, you know, like kept, kept going on their path to learning more versus the women that said, oh, this is not for me? Okay, so I will say the conversion rate of women opening wallets is basically 100% every time because they're all so excited. They've had a couple of glasses of wine. And they just feel, I mean, just, I don't know if any, everyone here can remember, it's probably feels so long ago when you first learned about the opportunity and the newness at, of blockchain and how it's, you know, resonates with being the beginning of the internet. Um, everyone's excited. So everyone definitely, absolutely, almost always, every person opens a wallet. And then from there, I mean, I consider myself, you know, their advisor. So I'm very careful on making sure they are not rushing into buying anything. Etta, we know a, a joint person, Janice, and she is, as you know, one of our, we ended up, this is the weirdest connection. Etta and I have a mutual friend, um, which is so random how that could happen. But um, when she first went to my Wine, Women and Wallets event, she was like, let's go. I'm investing, you know, like a big chunk of money. I'm buying NFTs. Let's go. I want this. I want this. And I was like, absolutely not. Take a breather. And I think that's important. Like, I don't want women to rush into the space and make a bunch of mistakes. And in six months, they go, dear Lord, why did I invest in that NFT? Like, you, it's so easy to, you know, have starry eyes and think you're stumbling upon the next big um, PFP project or whatever. And I want women to look beyond that. I want them to look into more meaningful um, use cases for blockchain and smart contracts and maybe find the companies that you do want to invest in that you think will be here for the long term more than just a PFP, right? So I would say for the most part, women do not want to continue on Twitter and Discord. And most of them never do set up any of that. And that's the whole idea of where Coin Queen's came from starting as a web threes, because these women, they have families, they have jobs. They do not want to be on Twitter all day. They don't want to be in discord. They just want someone to tell them, should I buy anything? Um, what should I be doing? Should I be, you know, taking any money out? Should I be putting money in? Um, and so 
that's the whole idea, I think, of what I've de- created and what I want to duplicate for other women. I want to give them, you know, they can do the exact same thing I'm doing, set it up in their community. They can push out my newsletter to their group. I communicate with my group of women via um, Telegram. And then I have, from that has sprung separate Telegrams for women who just have different goals and have different ideas um, and passion levels. <laughs> some women just want to touch every quarter and some women, you know, are more excited about the stuff, but they still do don't want to be the researcher. It's just like, it's the same reason people have financial advisors. It's the same, you know, reason why you have anyone who handles any of your finances is because you work, you have a family of a life and there's people who are better suited to do that. And when I look around NFT Twitter or crypto Twitter and, and all of the um, discord groups that we all participate in, I'm like, damn, there's just a whole bunch of really smart women that should be doing the same thing. And it's, it, and they, sh- they should be making money off of it. And they should be helping women get access to this knowledge. So I think I answered your question. It's most women do not, I would say 80% of women do not want to spend any additional time participating in any of this, but they do want me to shoot out in the telegram to be like, Oh, Hey, eyes of fashion has this really cool AR filter. You could go download it. You know, maybe 20% of them go through the effort to be like, sure, yeah, that sounds cool. That's something I'll do. But for, I mean, my women age groups average 30 to 55, and they're not, they're not participating like we all are. So, yeah. And that's why we need a whole bunch of little coin queens out there helping them. That, that's great. And do you think, you know, now that you mentioned that, that they really don't want to be involved in Twitter and Discord? I mean, obviously, we know that that takes a lot of time and, and, of you know of our own time to actually know what's going on in all of the projects do you think do you see this changing do you see that it's just going to evolve into okay we're not going to be in discord maybe anymore because i feel sometimes it's like discord it's twitter it's like everywhere but then how do we actually you know decentralize and centralize in the same way yeah no i i don't know if discord is going to go away i think we all have a love hate relationship with it for my project when i'm i'm going to use so i was trying to use there's this one called console.xyz it's actually like built on stacks anyway it doesn't matter um but for when i look at the how what i think the future is i think all of this is going to go away for the most part because I think it'll be a much more seamless, like not visible, all of this um, tricky interactions and having to click this giveaway or enter this. I think it'll be a much more seamless experience. Um, it, it, in my opinion, it has to be for there to be mass adoption. So for now, the idea being to train people to help bring on women to Web3 and help take out some of that clunkiness, some of that, you know, danger. Um I, I do see it evolving. I think it has to. For there to be mass adoption, it has to evolve. It has to be more, it has to be safer. It has to be easier. We need more regulations. I mean, I could go on and on. So I, I think it definitely evolves. And um, I mean, I manage, and for my personal business, I manage my women, like I said, on Telegram groups. Um, as I get ready to bring on, you know, to formally launch Coin Queens as a Web3 business and bring on hopefully my first 50 women, I'll manage that. I think I'm going to use Twitter um, communities that just started because we're all already here and it's so easy to just click over to your community in Twitter. Um, And I'll have a website. I'll have a token gated website where women will access the products, the platform so they can um, use at their events. Um, So which I didn't even talk about. So the if uh, the women that join the Coin Queens through the token gated website, you'll have access to my Pro, the Wine Moon Wallets program. And then you'll also get your own personalized NFT minting page to use at your events. Because when women get through these events, they want to set up their wallet, whether they want to put just $50 in their account, that's great. Um, and they all want to mint something. So I think the safest and smartest way to help women participate and not go do something stupid is have the hostess which would be, say you, have a personalized minting page where your guests can mint your NFT, your Coin Queens NFT, and you would keep 
you know, a large chunk of that revenue. And you can pick your price, pick your quantity. You could charge them $5. You could charge them $50. So if you had 20 women attend and you charge them $50, that's $1,000. So, I mean, that's not chump change for hosting a happy hour. That's meaningful for women. That's whether it's to, you know, take your husband on a nice vacation alone or send your kids to that summer camp they wanted to go to. I mean, those are meaningful numbers for people. And so I get excited about, helping women, you know, do that and find and have a way, a product and a platform to get Web3 adoption out there, but also generate revenue. I think those are two big pain points and two things I'm trying to solve. I think this is so cool. And I think that even today with the NFT industry, I mean, it might not be the easiest, but you can also do the mint as part of, you know, minting your access, um, you know, ticket, your ticket to to the event, the wine uh, and wallets event, right? Uh, so this could be also another way of, of doing that. So that's really cool. And I think really what you're doing is amazing. And this is such a good um, system. I think that you really thought it through and in such an in- interesting way. Um Oh my God, I had a really good question that I wanted to ask. I'm just trying to remember it. I think you also wanted to say something maybe and Edda wanted to say something. So I'm trying to get my train of thought back. No, I mean, I, I am super excited about this project. And, and yeah, I keep thinking, you know, how is it that we're going to be able to evolve into a more, you know, manageable and reasonable use of our time into this space? Obviously, for some of us, we have this is now our careers and we're going to spend as much time as we can because it's actually our jobs. But, you know, for, for the women that we want to onboard, this is really starting as, you know, a get together with friends that instead of talking about gossip and other things, we're just going to talk about, you know, crypto and NFTs and, you know, have, you know, learn about something that could actually be meaningful for our futures, give us, you know, as you said, side money. Um, you know, especially I, I think a lot about moms, you know, that are, you know, start, that want to like go back into being productive and being back in business. And, and this is such a great way for them in a fun way and a very exciting way to just get back to it. So I, I think that's I'm, I'm in love with your project, you know, that I am a supportive and I'll be I'll be there. Paris chapter. <laughs> I love that. Oh, my God. And I just remembered my question, by the way. So Heather, if you want to say something, I'll just dump my question also and then you can go ahead. Uh, just that I get the answer because I'm super curious what you think and how you're teaching about the bear market and what do you think is the future of this whole NFT um, you know all the NFT communities and everything I love what you said about being more seamless in the communication and in the communities and I'd love to hear what you think about the bear market and everything and and what you feel that is coming for us Okay, so as far okay, as far as bear market as in relates to crypto, um, I'm kind of pleased that it is mimicking like the typical finance, your typical investments, like the macroeconomic plays that are happening in our traditional financial system that crypto is following it. I don't hate it. I love it. I think it's fine. And I I have the utmost faith in Bitcoin and Ethereum. I'm very much exposed to both of those personally. So I'm, I don't say that like hopium, like just saying it for saying it. I really do have faith in those technologies and the smart contracts. And um, I, I see them only growing, which it makes me excited about the fact that it's a bear. And I, what I'm building is not, you know, I think I have an advantage, even though people are like, why would you do, you know, launch something in a bear market? But the whole idea is what, what better time to give women the opportunity to invest for the first time in this, into this currency or into this technology when the prices are what they're at. If I believe in my heart where I think they're going in the future, then I want to just go scream it from the rooftops. And I want, you know, thousands of you know, copies of me screaming it from their rooftops in their cities and countries saying, hey, if women want a chance to get ahead, I don't need you necessarily investing in an NFT project. I just need you investing in this crypto or I need you investing in this particular, you know, tech because I see it going, you know, to the moon moving forward. So that like I love that I'm about to start this so that women who have a chance to get this information out in front of their 
um, community members, even if they do just buy an NFT, just at the with the factors that ETH is going to rise, their NFT is going to be more valuable and you're going to be a hero for having gotten them to invest now. So I love that that this could potentially, you know, bring on board a lot more women in a scalable way. Even though I'm starting small with, I my goal is 50 women because like I said, I really want to make sure that the people who start with me have success. I want to be very involved and do and figure out exactly what is the most meaningful way for them to effectively reach their communities. Um, because I know it'll probably be a little different for everybody. And then from there, you know, if you, if 50 of those women on board, you know, ten, only 10 women, that's, that's, you know, that's 500 women. And then if we go from there and on board a hundred women and each of those hundred on board 10, like that's a thousand. That's so cool. That's 1500. And maybe that just takes a couple of months. If I'm on everybody saying, Hey, you're hosting your one woman in wallets. Let's go. I'll be there. So I think it's a really fun time. And it's a great opportunity for people to be onboarding people because without probably much effort, you're going to look like a hero because you're having people invest when the market sits down. And then it's, I, I think it's going up. So I say, let's go, let's go get everyone in so they can, you know, ha- enjoy some easy um, uptake in their uh, investment account. This is so cool. And I couldn't agree more. Like, I think this is an incredible opportunity that, you know, you never know when it will come again. So I'm just so excited, actually. I think that um, the women that will be joining will be pioneers in this industry and will be able to spread a really powerful message and help so many women. Because if to get in, it's not, I was just talking so funny um, to a guy that just, you know, he's he's a very simple guy. He doesn't know really much about crypto. Uh, he lives right near me and and works near my dad's house. And he bought ETH in November for four thousand five hundred or something like that, and sold it. Of course, that's one thousand. Um, so I think even you know for for men or just like I think just the education is everything. To know you know to get in when it's low, to get out you know whenever you know. Of course you can, but like when whenever um, just to have that strategy, I think it's like a simple investing strategy that applies to everything. But I think it can just help so many people and so many women. So I think this is amazing, Heather. It's such a pleasure to to speak to you. It was just like an honor to listen to all your amazing uh, stories and things you've been doing. Um, You're such an asset. Like, it's so amazing to have you in in this world, like um, teaching so many women. I think that it's really, really amazing. Um, And and you're helping so many uh, women join the space. So so really an honor to talk to you. And I do want to add actually one more thing. If I see that I see in the meanwhile that no one asks questions. So I do want to add that Heather has an amazing, you have an amazing um, sense of fashion. I mean, you had the best looks every event uh, in New York. So uh, yeah, if you want to talk a bit about some of your favorite looks, uh, we are eyes of fashion after all. And when I see Kim is also in the audience, uh, and I know that Kim always used to ask, what is your uh, go-to key piece? So I would love to hear what is yours. <laughs> and um, and yes, some, some fashion. Uh, what is your style? Tell us. Okay. Well, so I was very, um, so my, my go-to piece, um, and anyone who saw me at NFT NYC probably knows my go-to piece, my cowboy boots. I love cowboy boots. I grew up on a farm in a very small rural, rural community in North Central Florida. I still live in Florida. I've been here my whole life. And so cowboy boots by far are my favorite um, go-to piece. I think it just can turn a look into an outfit without even trying very hard. And um yeah, and NFT NYC, I specifically did not tailor my look to New York. Um, I feel like everyone in New York, you know, typically dresses a little more fierce, a little hard um, blacks and like, you know, stronger um, power outfits. And I knew that was going to be the overall tone for most. And um, so I just tried to stay true to what more like my Southern like look that I use every day because I thought it would be an opportunity to 
just stand out a little bit. I knew it wasn't going to blend in. I knew it would be not the typical New York fashion. I've been to New York before. I was there staying with friends who live in Manhattan. I definitely have outfits that are appropriate for New York, but I was very specific about trying to um, just stay true. I'm, I'm, I live in the South. I like skirts. I like boots. I like, you know, all of that sort of Southern flair. So I tried to stick to it, even though I knew that it would be, it wouldn't blend in, but that was good. Do you know what I mean? Like that was kind of the point. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love the fact that you stuck to your authentic style. And I think that this is also one of the core things here, like for us at Eyes of Fashion, just to stick to, you know, be be ourselves um, and stick to our authentic style. So, so I really think this is so cool. And I loved it. I thought like, every event I just loved seeing your next outfit so I I thought it was so cool um so thank you so much I love that fashion advice and I think everyone should stick to who they are you know um even for me like I think for even as the art for as a fashion like you know when everyone was doing a pfp so we said you know for I said like I want to do my eyes you know my my fictional characters that are not a pfp that are just Um, a look and a style. So yes, yeah, so I really loved hearing about that. And this is so cool to have you part of the community uh, and just to chat. And it's been so much fun, Heather. So thank you so, so much. Um, I'll give Ada the mic just if she wants to say some last uh, words to finish off. Thank you, Heather. We cannot wait to see how it all progresses. And what's, just tell us what is the best way to reach you and get in contact with you. We want to, um, we're interested in following up with what you're doing. Absolutely. Thank you both for having me. It means a lot. I mean, I just feel like I've known you guys for forever in NFT world. Like a, a month is a year. So it's been amazing getting to know you guys. And I fully support. I love, I and I love seeing you. You have the cutest dresses, Talia. And Etta was so, she was fierce. She was totally New York fierce fashion. She's awesome. And um, Talia, you're just the beautiful artist. I knew that exactly what I like knew in my head what I thought you would look like in real life. And you were just everything. Everything is like authentic and sweet and beautiful that I knew you would. So it was so fun to see that all in real life. And I love being a part of your project. Your art is just, I've always loved fashion illustration. And when you start, came out saying you were going to launch a project, I was like, oh, I have to support this. Like hands down, have to support this. And I'm honored to hold your pieces. So thank you guys for having me. Oh, thank you so, so, so much for all the amazing kind words. And thank you so much. <laughs> um, really, really, it was an honor for us to have you. And thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Heather and Eva and to all our amazing audience. And so fun to hang with you guys and can't wait for next time. And so excited also for your mint, Heather. Uh, I know it's going to be a massive success. So I can't wait to see uh everything happening um and also you have an event coming up in um august 2nd so if you want to share a bit about that feel free uh and we can send some people down there as well um and yeah and that's it uh so so great to have you here All right. Thank you. Yeah. August 2nd will be like a little launch party where I'm looking at, we only have, I think I have a little, a little over 20 spots left. I wanted to have a hundred women to that because looking to onboard, like I said, 50 is what I'm hoping to be my max. If it needs to be more than that, I will figure it out and we will work with more and be effective. But I just want this to be really well run. It's going to be a business. It's not going to be, you know, just a random NFT that's going to sit and hopefully grow in value. It's going to be an opportunity for women to start their own Web3 business and generate their own revenue. So I'm super excited. So and, and like I said, um, and Etta pinned at the top my actual account. This is not my typical Twitter account. This is just another one I have that I logged in since I got kicked off the space. But um, feel free to go at, at, on my profile. I have um, tons of tweets I've posted about the upcoming launch. And um, you can find me at coinqueens.eth. That's that's Robbie. I love that. Thank you so much, everyone. And have a good night. I'm going to finish off. And yeah, or day or whatever. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to leave the space. So uh, yeah. Thank you all. Bye.